Hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. And today I'm just going to tell you why selling on Amazon is still the best e-commerce platform. And this is not just my opinion. This is not my, my opinion or my experience, although that weighs into a lot of my two cents of what I'm going to share with you today. But it's all in the numbers. It's all in the stats. Let's just be real. Stats are real. It's something facts, fact checking. And you know what? Honestly, this world could use a little bit more stats and fact checking. Am I right? I mean, we can't even tell what news is real anymore. We can't tell what platform is telling us the truth and who's saying what. And there's so many differences of opinions. But with the amazing use of technology, more and more stats are facts and provable by multiple locations, multiple websites, multiple fact checkers that are looking at all this stuff. And to be honest, one of the most important stats, the stats that people don't realize is that a lot of publicly traded companies, the publicly traded companies, everything, their information is public. You can look up how many employees Amazon has. You can look up how many times they've been sued. You can look up how many, what their revenue is as a publicly traded company. These are things that we have access to public record can give us so many facts that that we really don't know. But there's also lots of companies out there that collect and store all these facts. So of course I'm using most of the facts that I have from Statista. Um, if you pay like 50 bucks a month, you can get all kinds of stats for all kinds of pr pretty much anything you want, especially big, huge corporations like Amazon, like Google, like eBay, like uh, Walmart and, and Twitter even, like all these different facts that you can find out. I mean, it costs a little bit of change to get access to all the really great facts, but there's a lot of free information out there as well and these are tracked by public record so all that to say that i'm getting all of the information here it's not off the top of my head it's not some random TikToks putting together some information this is actually a company that um, has immense amount of data and they sell these statistics to people um, and so for a little chunk of change i use it for all kinds of research purposes um i i do i just want you guys to know that i don't pull this stuff off the top of my head and just like spit out a bunch of random stuff. I want you guys to be the most informed Amazon sellers out there. I want you to be informed as entrepreneurs. I want you to be inspired and motivated and aware of the numbers and the changing landscape that's out there. So with all that said, I am going to premise this on these facts from Statista and you guys can all look them up if you want to. You can <laughs> even ask um, ask Siri, ask Google, and they will also give you some of these statistics. But I'm just going to save you time and energy because you know what? You all know that I'm like addicted to learning and research and like, what do you do in your spare time? Um, when I'm not playing cornhole and hanging out with my fam, I'm like researching and learning stuff like random facts. I've always been one of those people because I just find it interesting like how many people. So I'm just going to give you the business today and I'm going to talk to you about these things and why they matter to you. Because let's be real, like statistics are great and everything, but like, have you ever come across and be like, oh, that's a fun fact, but like literally who cares? Like no one needs to care about that. But you guys need to care about some of this stuff because it's going to help you, especially if you're experiencing some discouragement, if your things aren't selling the way that you want them to, or you're just feeling some frustration. Sometimes these facts can really help set us back on track to realize that like, hey, we're still playing on the world's largest e-commerce platform. Yes, it's still that. I mean, are there going to be some rivals? Absolutely. Amazon is going to be rivaled by Walmart in their prime, in their one day deliveries and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Walmart will be their, their number one competitor in the next five years. They're already starting to take some market share, which we'll actually get to. Because did you know that back in 2019, Amazon had 45% of the U.S. e-commerce uh, market share? But in 2022, it fell to 37.8%. So there are other e-commerce platforms that are up and rising and coming against Amazon, but they still have nearly 40% of the e-commerce market share. So we're not even talking about brick and mortar. We're not talking about that kind of stuff. We're talking about e-commerce. So just remember, as of June 2022, 37.8% of the U.S. market share was Amazon. So... 
that means, I mean, let's just round it to 40. I know some of my accounting friends are like, don't round the numbers, but you know, it's easier to talk about 40% than 37.8, right? So approximately 40% of the entire US marketplace online, retail, anybody that sells anything on there, including your Shopify store, all the way to Amazon, Walmart, and all the big giants that sell anything, 40%, nearly 40% is Amazon. That's just a fact. So that's something that we need to be aware of. If you're not selling on Amazon and you have products, you're missing out on 40% of the market. Would you want to miss out on 40% of your potential customers because you're not offering your product on Amazon? That's really scary. So if you have a product, it should be on Amazon. Also, the net, it's not just about the percentage of market share. Listen to these numbers, billions of dollars. Yes, billions with a B, y'all. $514 billion in revenue for Amazon in 2022. That was their revenue. That's insane. Who else is making that kind of money? I don't know. I could like literally look at the biggest companies. I didn't do all the statistics and looking through all this, but $514 billion Amazon is bringing in. That means all of those customers are exposed to all of those products, your products. This is one of the reasons why it's still the best place, but there's more. There's more to the story than this. I'm going to get to those stats. Let's talk about Amazon Prime for just a second. Amazon Prime members. Not just how many there are, which we'll get to that stat as well. One in three Americans, period. Almost one in, nearly one in three Americans have a Prime membership with over 95 million Americans claiming a Prime membership. So not just users of Amazon, that's two thirds of Amazon's total audience has their app, has Amazon Prime, two-day free shipping, Prime Video, Prime Access. Y'all, do you have access to 95 million Prime customers? If you're not, if you're merchant fulfilling, you're missing out on Prime, although you're still on Amazon and that's a good step. Having your offers be Prime are 95% of people. Oh, and of the percentage of that, they say at least 20% of people use the filter of Amazon Prime only. That was a really interesting stat to me. So if you're, a, if you're selling on Amazon, but you're only merchant fulfilled, you are missing out on so many customers who refuse to buy anything that's not Prime. So just keep that in mind. If you have some things that are merchant fulfilled and you're not using Prime, it's something to consider. That is the difference between selling something and not. If there's something on Prime versus not Prime, most of the time, people aren't going to trust that. They're not going to trust that it will arrive on time. Amazon customers are conditioned to get things in a couple days. They realize that. They know that subconsciously. They know, oh, I still have time. I'm going to that baby shower on Saturday. They're thinking about that gift on Thursday night, y'all. Thursday night. Because they know that they can get it in a couple days. Sometimes even the next day or same day. If you're talking groceries, perishables, things like that, um, their Amazon delivery can get you something and, and even the same day. But guess who else can do that? Walmart. Just, just saying. One in three Americans have Prime membership. And do you know that millennials are the biggest audience when it comes to Amazon? They outpace the baby boomers by two to one having Amazon. So you meet anybody under, I would say, under the age of 30. I would say between, if they're eight, between 18 and, and 29 even. I don't even know what the ages are now. Gen Z and Gen X and Gen Y2KB. I don't know what all of the, the, the millennials and all the different things. But I do know that. I know that two-thirds of the total U.S audience have prime and two to one are millennials. So what does that tell you about the products that you sell? Think about it. Millennials are the number one users on Amazon right now by two to one. Are you selling products that are appealing to millennials? Have you done any customer research in this area of uh, people between the ages of 18 and 29 right now? 
and what they're buying and what they're looking for, if your stuff's not selling, consider your audience. Consider your audience. Just consider what you're selling. Millennials, if you don't have products that are appealing to millennials, why not? Do some homework, do some research, go back to the drawing board. Do some product, um, well, not product research, but demographic research. Do you know any millennials? If you don't, go to some of the sites, look at what they're buying, look at what they're interested in, look at their potential budgets because their budgets are gonna be smaller. Let's just be real. Everyone shops on Amazon. I say everyone because I have never met someone that doesn't shop on Amazon, except for my dad and he passed away like six years ago. I bet if he was alive today, he probably would shop on Amazon. But he was also in the baby boomer category as well. So that's also something to consider. If you're selling products, you need to appeal to the people that are purchasing that are on Amazon ready to buy from you. Okay, so just consider all of that. Prime members, what do they spend? There are over 100 million Prime members around the world. Actually, there's 153 million worldwide, but in the US is about 100,000. There are 100 million, sorry. They typically spend at least $1,000 a year. Typically. I actually just saw someone in a Facebook group say they spend 20 grand a year on Amazon because they don't like shopping. They just order everything there groceries, food, everything is ordered from Amazon. Absolutely everything. But at least about $1,000 a year. That's a little less than 100 bucks a month that they're spending on Amazon in addition to their Prime membership. So just think about that. I think that's low, to be honest. I'm thinking there are some people that average, they typically, you know, these, these are averages and typicals. But honestly, how many, how many of us spend more than that on Amazon? Because we're buying our normal, typical things, buying things we want, buying things we need, car parts, um, diaper bags, groceries. Um, honestly, honestly, there's this um, particular product for those YouTubers. You can see this for podcasters. You can't see this. This is V8 Energy drink right here. It doesn't have all of the, the hoopla that like Red Bull has and a lot of extra chemicals. It's just vitamins, minerals green tea but you don't taste the green tea it's just peach mango energy it has about it says it has about as much caffeine as like a cup of coffee not too much so it's not like one of those like i'm a red bull or five hour energy i don't like all that kind of stuff it makes me jittery this all has um straight up veggies and fruit servings plus a little bit of caffeine and i love them they taste really good i have these delivered unsubscribe and save on Amazon. Why? Because I drink at least one a day and it's on subscribe and save and the cheapest place to get it is Amazon by the case. So I order it by the case on Amazon and it's delivered to my door and usually it's here in 24 hours or less. So someone somewhere locally is is distributing this. So that's just something to consider that more and more people are are automatically subscribing and saving to certain things like my contact solution stuff that just comes automatically. Um, I teach this to my kids, you guys. Never run out of things that you use every single day. That's just like a mantra that I have. It's so annoying to run out of something that you use every single day. Just stock up a little. Just have some. And when you run on low, let's just subscribe and save on Amazon. It's awesome. I know exactly how much I need. And once a month, it's just delivered. So I don't have to think about it. It's one less thing I have to think about. And if you free up your brain to think about other things other than whether or not you're reordering your VA energy drink on, on Amazon, it's just one less thing. So consider your customer. Who are they? What are they into? What do they want to buy? Now, this doesn't mean do not, do not, for the people in the back, I'm going to talk a little louder. <laughs> do not take this and think that I'm telling you to chase a bunch of trends for millennials. That's not what I'm saying. But everybody is learning how to shop in different ways. COVID changed everything. We'll just say that. We all talk about it now. It's been like, you know, three years since the shutdown, all this kind of stuff. But there are residual effects, things that people got used to that are never going to go back. So we have to get with the times. Something as big as a pandemic will change the way we do things forever. And now we need to move forward with that, including who's shopping, where, when, how, and what they're buying. Now, I'm not saying you have to change up, chase a bunch of trends and you have to be up and up on the latest TikToks and all this kind of stuff, but pay attention to who's shopping and where they're shopping. 
it's going to change the world. Millennials are all about experiences and less about going to stores and buying stuff. They, their time is valuable to them. They want to work remotely. They want to have more experiences. They want to be out in nature a little bit more. So shopping just is needs to be convenient and easy. But you also they also has to have what they want. They were trained up since they were young with phones in their hands to be able to shop online. So they're very, very savvy shoppers online as well. They know exactly what to do, how to get there. Ask them. Ask the millennials what they're buying and where and how, because that will really help you. All right, moving on. Amazon is taking over traditional stores. Before, back in the day, right? When we say back in the day, people go to the local hardware store and they would have someone help them pick out their products. But now Amazon has everything you need. If you know exactly what you need, you can just order it on Amazon. The other day, I will tell you this, we were talking about hardware stores, right? Like, like back in the day, going to the hardware store because you needed something, right? You hope that they had the exact size, shape, idea what you needed. Well, I have a favorite, like, skillet that I cook with, right? It's like a deeper um, skillet that I can, you know, fry chicken in, but I can also make like biscuits and gravy, my gravy in there. It's a little bit deeper than just like a frying pan. It has a really nice lid for simmers for, you know, like making like chicken and rice or something like that. Well, the the top of it broke, the the lid broke on it, the, and it just needed a new lid handle. So I was just like, hey, Ben, can you fix this? And yeah, he like literally just looked it up on Amazon, ordered the part, and the next day my very, very favorite pan was fixed. And now the handles broke on the actual um, frying pan, so now I have to like get a new handle for it. But again, I didn't want to replace the whole thing. I absolutely love this pan, and literally I cook almost everything in this pan. So when the lid broke, I was like, no, but it was fixable, right? Um, but they had the part on Amazon, but we don't know if we would have went to the hardware store, if I would have actually had that particular thing. But because I, there's so many options online, we were able to order it and in like two days it was fixed. Awesome. That's actually saved us a trip to the hardware store to prowl around to see if they even had this. That's the limit of brick and mortar stores the, and categories, hardware hardware something as simple as that can be purchased on amazon almost everyone price checks on amazon this is another statistic that i thought was really really interesting nine out of ten shoppers checking amazon for the prices when customers do that it's because they're looking for all around best deals and then customer service so you know for sure, let's just be honest here. So I know that these are statistics, right? But nine out of 10 people check Amazon for pricing, even if they're in the store. If you're at the store and you're like, oh, how much is this on Amazon? You realize it's more on Amazon, you're gonna buy it at Target. But if you realize that there is a discrepancy or a, a, a difference, and it's cheaper on Amazon, you're already at in the cart. Just add it to your cart right there and be like, okay, I'll have this in two days. Obviously, if it's something you need immediately and it costs more at the store, then you're going to have to pay the premium for that now. But if you can wait for two days, you can save $10. Sure, people are using Amazon to price check, both for high and low. Of course, we know our seller friends are looking to see if they can make a profit on something that they're finding in the store. But also, our customers are price checking. And some people don't price check at all. They only buy from Amazon. They just don't want to deal with any other store. They don't want to deal with using Apple Pay, even though Apple Pay makes it so much, or Apple and Google Pay make things so much easier to shop in different stores online. It's that customer service. It's knowing in the back of our minds that if something doesn't fit or we don't like it or arrives damaged, that Amazon will take care of that as well. It's a buyer experience that everyone loves. I know some of us sellers don't love it because Amazon will literally give people refunds for absolutely no reason, but they're working on solutions for that. They've they've implemented in the past two years um, satellite and or images taking pictures of your pre your products and your package on the front porch so that you know that it was delivered. They're trying to mitigate their own risk of some of that non-delivery kind of stuff 
but they're also um, doing that to protect customers as well and, and sellers as well because it comes out of our pocket if something is lost or damaged and it's not and that's something that's our fault. So paying attention to that as well. But they are refining their services, but remembering it takes a while for them to roll out new things because they're literally the biggest global entity, right? Oh, best-selling days on Amazon. This one shocked me, to be honest, because this has only been around for what, like four years or something like that, Amazon Prime Day. I always thought that Cyber Monday and Black Friday was the absolute most profitable and biggest days for Amazon, but actually they've been pushing Prime Day a lot more. But not only because of that, do you know why Prime Day is so, Prime Day is so popular? It's not the products, y'all. It's not the special deals that you and I are offering. It's not the special deals that Amazon's offering. The number one reason why Amazon Prime Day is the most profitable day for Amazon is because they sell their memberships at a discount on Prime Day. They offer a Prime discount on your Prime membership. So keep that in mind if you need to renew or you're giving a gift membership or you're buying one for your business as well as your personal. They convert 18.6% of people to Prime memberships on Prime Day. That's more than Black Friday and Cyber Monday combined. As far as these are the, their statistics, I don't make this stuff up, y'all. Prime members, so they sell more Prime memberships on that day than any other day, which of course increases all of their revenue, which then people start using Amazon Prime, right? I love Amazon Prime for all kinds of reasons. First of all and foremost, because of the two-day free shipping, and I already know it's going to arrive at my door. I'm going to get it. Even tells me when. Your package will arrive between 415 and 615. That's awesome. But also because there's videos and there's um, music and there's access to so many more things on Prime. So take advantage of your Prime membership. But also remember, Prime Day is huge. So when Amazon starts to talk about Prime Day, you need to be ready now. They've been they've had them in July and October in history. So uh, every year they don't really announce it until like a last minute kind of thing. Maybe they give us a month or so before we know. But generally speaking, it's been July or they've had two July and October. Now, most people, you, you treat this like Black Friday. You can treat this like Cyber Monday. But in generally speaking, it's not the best day always for sellers. It's really great for Amazon. But it brings the traffic people wait you know how it is like if you're trying to buy like a tv you usually wait for black friday right because you know that during black friday there's always the best tv deals we all like you're living under a rock if you don't know that and if you did you just learned something new if you didn't know buy a tv on black friday it's the best time to buy a tv it's the lowest prices uh, it's worth it you'll save hundreds and hundreds of dollars on the best tvs out there if you wait till black friday well if you're waiting to buy a prime membership which probably none of you listening are not prime members but if you're not for some reason it's best to do it on prime day because they offer discounts and then you renew at a new rate also they have student rates and i believe senior citizen rates for prime so just check into those things if you know somebody doesn't have prime you know why you want people to have Prime? Because those are your customers. So tell them, go get Amazon Prime. And then they know they're buying from you too. Also, that's another, it's not a statistic. This is a freebie, y'all. Freebie. <laughs> um, this is off the top of Kristen's head, but I will tell you this. Most people that are not Amazon sellers, but they're buyers, they really have no idea that they're buying from small businesses. So every chance you get to tell someone, you need to tell them that yes, Amazon is this big giant e-commerce company, but you are a small business selling your items on Amazon. And most of the time when people are buying products from Amazon, they're buying from small US businesses, supporting families like mine, like yours. So don't be shy about telling people that. Oh, did you know that? Yeah, I sell on Amazon, but you know that that's not from Amazon. It's actually from small businesses. You're buying from Kristen Ostrander and from Michelle and from Dave and from Joe and from Jane and from Judy and Pam. Buying from all these people that are running small businesses from their home just like mine. So thank you for shopping on Amazon because you're supporting my small business.
and small businesses of all my clients and all the people that are selling on Amazon. They're all mostly small businesses. I mean, we're not talking about like Nike and KitchenAid and places like that, but most of the time when you're buying, look at that sold and shipped by. Sold, shipped by Amazon, sold by Kristen's favorite things, right? So tell people about that. Tell them proudly what you do. And you're a small business selling through Amazon's platform, accessing a global customer base. Yeah, this is why Amazon is still the best place. Because no, you're not going to get 95 billion people, <laughs> billion, sorry, billions, millions, all these things. 100 million customers, prime customers, aren't going to walk by your brick and mortar today. They're not. Are you getting a million visits to your website every day? Every day. On Amazon, that's the potential. Your product has the potential to reach a global audience every minute of every hour of every day that it's on their website. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a Shopify store. I get one order a month for my specialty shop, Shopify store that I have. It is a very specialty product that we sell. We have it on our website, but we also have it on Amazon. I sell one a day on Amazon and one a month on my website. Why? Because Amazon has more traffic. Everybody's going there to buy product. Just keep this in mind. Sales per second, minute, and hour. This is just so fun. 17 million, 17 million an hour. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Every minute, $283,000 in sales. Every second, almost five grand. These are, this is just the global power of buying on Amazon. We do it so casually, so easily. So, I mean, literally while we're in the bathroom, right? We're like, oh, I have to pee. And then in the meantime, you're literally ordering something on Amazon. It takes 30 seconds. Oh, I need to go back in here, do this and this and this, done. This is why they're so successful. They made it really easy for customers to buy. Take some notes, y'all. This is where we sell. So taking notes and understanding who they serve, how they serve them, why they serve them, and all the different things, it's really important to pay attention. Now, sellers. Let's talk about sellers for a minute. 80% of Amazon sellers use multiple platforms to sell. So that's another thing. You want to be on Amazon, absolutely, but you also want to be everywhere, because why not? If you're putting the time, energy, and effort into creating products, specifically bundles that can serve a large audience, why not have them everywhere? Now, I will caution you with this. If you're starting on Amazon, stay on Amazon and keep on Amazon until you have a really good, well-oiled machine that you're very comfortable with. Usually takes people about a year to get there. If you're just starting out and you're just starting to add products and learn the process and deal with your own processes and figure out your numbers and figure out your money, that's great. Then add another platform, add something like Walmart. Did you know that Target and uh, Walmart and Macy's now and probably some other ones are going to start adding third party fulfillment and selling just like Amazon? Macy's now. Walmart for sure is the next is, is already doing it. So if you're not selling on Walmart, they've made it even easier. They want more third party sellers. So don't put all of your eggs in one basket. But don't diversify too early either. You have to know what you're doing for you to be comfortable in one space to then jump ship. You don't want to do all of it all at once, right? You've ever heard jack of all trades, master of none? Like I'm guilty of this, y'all. So that's why I'm telling you, don't be, don't be like I was and try to do all the things all the same time because you're not going to be excellent at it. So get really good at Amazon and then add an additional stream or platform. And one of the other statistics that there is that I want to share with you. Over 200 million third party sellers on Amazon, 85% of them profitable. And of that 85% earning 5,000 or more in revenue on Amazon. 
Now that's a that's a crazy statistic because there's so many and it's really hard to measure all of these things, but they all have the internal revenue numbers. They don't always have the profit numbers unless sellers are reporting that. But they have those 1099Ks that we all get. So they know how many businesses there are, how many 1099Ks they issue and what the issuing number of those are there. Now, they don't know what our profit is unless we tell them that, but the statistics are staggering. 200 million Amazon sellers. And of that, they say that the majority of the people are spending between 16 and 24 hours a week on their Amazon businesses. This is from the small businesses. So take that into consideration as well. How many hours you're spending on your Amazon business? Is it average? Is it above average? Is it below? Where are you at? The bottom line here, you guys, is that Amazon is still the best place with the most traffic, with the most customers. If you have a product, don't you want to go where the most customers are? That would give you the most opportunity to sell them, right? You have all these products. You want to reach an audience to, to buy. You have to know who those audience members are and where they're hanging out. If you're selling products that aren't geared to the demographic on Amazon, which the greatest thing about the demographic on Amazon is that it's everyone. The majority, according to their statistics, two to one users are millennials, ages 18 through 29, I think is what that is at this point. I could be wrong on that. Um, the age group is important because what are they buying? What are they buying this year? Like who cares what they were buying two years ago? Where are the surveys? Look at the statistics. With chat GPT now, you can look up anything you want. Ask Siri, ask Google. There's statistics for everything. This is part of your research, y'all. This is a freebie. This is not in the wholesale bundle system. This is, maybe it should be. Maybe I should be teaching a class on actually how to conduct outside research. Yeah, I've taught you a 12 step research process to go through the research, but then, you have to know thy customer. Like you can create a product that fills a need and meets a need or solves a problem, but you have to know for who. We're not, um, one, one client recently when we were talking about the done for you bundles reached out and he said, you know, thank you so much for this done for you bundle. He said, after seeing your work and realizing these are the types of bundles you put together, here's what he said. He said, I realized I was overthinking this bundle process, that I was trying to create a problem to solve rather than just solving a problem that already existed. Bingo, you've got this. That's right, you're overthinking. These statistics here are just meant for you to understand your Amazon customer better, the platform you're standing on better. It's not what we want it to be. It is what it is. And we have to work within the boundaries and the parameters of it. It's not always glamorous. We know it's not glamorous. It's not even sunshines and rainbows. That's actually a rarity with Amazon. But it's still the fastest place to earn the most money with e-commerce. I've been in this game for over almost 20 years, 20 years. This is my 20th anniversary this year. In June will be my 20th year in e-commerce. So I'm on 19.8 years at this point. It's almost June. Um, and honest to goodness, things have changed so much. Things have changed more in the past three years due to a global pandemic and a shift in how we obtain products and how we buy them and how we distribute them, things change really quickly. But what hasn't changed is that people still want to buy products. They have problems and needs that they want. So instead of necessarily thumbing through catalogs and looking at cool products, think about the problems around you. Your own personal, when I say problems, like, you know, I'm not talking about Oh, I should probably clarify, but we all have different problems and needs and issues. You ever say, oh, I wish this and this. I'm currently inventing another product because I have a problem that needs to be solved and there are no viable products that fit my need at this time. And it's not just my need. If it's just your own need, then that's one thing. But if you need it, if you have a problem that you have, how many other people have the same problem? How can you create a variation of something because it's awesome, but it's not exactly what you need? 
That's exactly what I'm saying. Have you looked for something, a gift or a product or something that's like, oh, that's kind of sort of what I want, but not quite the right thing. This is how new products are invented. This is how new bundles are put together. Solving a problem doesn't necessarily mean that the problem has to be earth shattering. Sometimes the problem is you want a variety pack of granola bars and they only come in one flavor or they come in flavors that you don't like. And you want to get multiple styles, multiple brands. You want to buy them all at once. Maybe they're not available in your area, which is why you have no idea that they don't exist. There's a product that one of our um, clients carries. It's, it is a variety pack of bars, like a granola style, protein style bars or whatever. I didn't even know these things existed because they don't sell them in my area. Yet I bought this product from a client and honest to goodness, they were gone in one day. My family ate all of them. There was 24. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's my family. We got something in here. It's a sweet treat. And someone put them in an amazing variety pack. And literally, my family ate them all gone in one day. I'm like, how many of these things did you guys eat, y'all? The struggle is real. But you know, that's what I'm saying. Don't limit yourself and don't overthink. Sometimes a variety pack solves a problem. It doesn't have to be earth shattering. It's not, you're not reinventing the wheel and it's not like you're coming up with something all automatically from scratch. Maybe it's a moderation of something, a modification or an addition to a game you play, a hobby that you have, a mobility issue. You know, I have a really close friend. I'm a board member of the Invisible Warriors organization where we support uh, women, specifically women with chronic illnesses, invisible illnesses. So, you know, those people, you might know somebody who, who has a chronic illness, yet outside they look normal, they look fine, they look like there's nothing wrong with them, but they're continually suffering with chronic illness that other people don't see. It's really easy to see somebody on crutches or in a wheelchair or have a broken arm, um, but you don't necessarily see someone who suffers from vertigo or fibromyalgia or MS or type 1 diabetes and the complications with that or someone who is um, has visibility issues yet they're not completely blind. You know, there's so many different things that we can't see that people are suffering. And so um, as a board member of uh, Invisible Warriors, um, there's just there's a lot of uh, our fellow entrepreneurs that are in there that are they struggle with things like mobility um one of our our president ceo founder is in a wheelchair and so she's a very big advocate for making sure that places are accessible because there's things that she'd like to do and places she'd like to go that aren't accessible to her in her wheelchair and so there's things like that like mobility issues it's not necessarily a um it doesn't have to be a problem that it's solved for millions and millions of people it can be something that you're solving for say 500 people. But there's a lot of people in your global audience on Amazon. So don't limit yourself to just what you're thinking about your environment. You have to dig a little bit deeper and really think about some of the problems and issues. They're, just, they're all around you. They're all around you. Like come up with a brainstorming session and you say, oh, I wish, I wish I had a product for this, or I wish something would do this instead of this. I don't know. Have, have a brainstorming session. All I want to tell you is stop overthinking about kind of moving mountains with every product or every um, bundle that you're creating. It doesn't have to be earth shattering. It can just literally be, oh, this is a simple solution to a simple problem. And just think through it. Walk around your house. Look at some of the issues. Look at some of the problems. Take note of your brain when it says, oh, I wish this or dang it. I wish this product would do that. Think about it because it might be out there already. And if it's not on Amazon or it's not a bundle, that's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to serve millions and millions and millions of global customers. So that's your episode for the day. I hope these stats really trigger your mind to thinking yes. We have a privilege of selling here. Yes, there's problems and we're, that's for another day. We all know that it's not sunshines and rainbows all the time. And Amazon is not just the happiest place in the world to work with. However, 
they have built something absolutely amazing and absolutely global that none of us would have access to otherwise. So for that, we thank them. And for that, we say we're staying here. We're going to bring our products to the table. We're going to bring our solutions to the customers and get profit from that. So be encouraged, friends. You're still on the best global e-commerce platform there is. So be happy about that. Tell people they're buying from small businesses and they're supporting you and get out there and solve some problems with your products and that will bring you profits. You guys, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing on this wonderful, amazing spring day. I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. See you same time, same place next week for another episode.